I would like now to invite our last but not least PhD finalist, Lee Dwin. Uh, she has a background in economics, and for her PhD research, she has been conducting an impact evaluation and behavioral experiment in developing countries. Please welcome her to the stage. Thank you. Thanks. I'm so excited to get to present my action research in Bangladesh. And when I was last there, I walked into this classroom, and I was immediately struck by the warmth of this one single girl. Sadia. You can see with a smile on her face, she really enjoys coming to school. And she even told me that she's outperforming all the boys in her class. But this will soon change when puberty hits. From now on, every time she has her period, she misses up to three days of schooling every month. And that's due to very poor health facilities in the schools, but also because in many developing countries, menstruating girls are considered impure. They're marginalized, and they shouldn't partake in daily life. And we see that the gap in schooling between boys and girls starts to widen from this point onwards. Now, this is not a new problem, but it's recently gotten a lot of attention. And organizations are rushing in, pouring millions and millions of dollars, trying to help these menstruating girls come to school. But it's chaos. There's no evidence. Nobody knows how much good they're doing, at what cost, and maybe if they're doing some harm. And this is exactly where our research steps in, because we need rigorous evidence. So we partnered up with this nonprofit organization in Bangladesh, and together with them, we co-designed a randomized controlled trial. So they, they spent $3 million into building toilets in school, training the teachers, and strengthening communities. And we, we track how the lives of these girls change over time. So we track things like their poverty, their empowerment, their health, anything that you can name. We measure it, and we call it well-being data. But it's not enough. We also need to have an objective measure of school attendance, since schooling is one of the key channels to reach these programs can lead to long-term well-being. And therefore, we need to collect school attendance data. And here we ran into a problem, because we wanted to use the school records and we found out that they're heavily corrupted, more corrupted than we could have foreseen, because schools have financial incentives to cheat the system. So this is where we are today. We have no accurate data on our key outcome variable, which is the school attendance. So we have this research with a fixed budget, now we have a problem, which brings me here today why I'm pitching the solution, potential solution. Because we could use this money to hire 20 local women and our local team would then train them to become independent data collectors. This basically means that these women will go into the schools once a month on a surprise day, they will play games with all the children, and secretly they will check all the attendance. So that in the end, we have our own independent school attendance database of all the 60,000 children in all of the 150 schools, which is our total research setting. And we already have the crucial first steps. We have the ethical approval from here, the ethical review board in the Netherlands, also the approvals from the Bangladeshi government and the local authorities, as well as our local team who is ready to supervise this, this process. So to sum up, we have this research that can really find the causal link to which these millions of dollars can generate impact on the lives of these girls. We ran into a problem which, can which we can solve by the action of creating our own database of school attendance. So that in the end, we have rigorous evidence on these programs. And that's not only of importance to our implementers, it's of importance for policymakers all over the world who are asking themselves the question, which program should I invest in so that I can help as many girls like Sadia as possible to keep coming to schools with big smiles on their faces. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. Mm -hmm. And also a fascinating project, also very useful. Also being a woman, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, um, what I wanted to ask you, my father was a school director. Mm -hmm. And I understand uh, from your... Um, you know your presentation, your proposal mm -hmm. that the the women, the local women, will go on surprise visits to the schools. 
so the directors of the schools will know that they will be uh, that there will be people coming into the school mm -hmm. but and they will think that these women are playing games but in fact there will be a hidden agenda Mm -hmm. More or less. Uh, I mean, because the idea for these women is to count the number of girls and to count the number of boys and uh, have them hand out cards with uh, a different color for yeah, exactly. girls and boys. Then you count and you see how many girls, how many. I'm, I know that all of this was approved by the Ethics Commission. I'm just thinking of my father. Would he have liked not knowing people coming with a hidden agenda in uh, his school? So yeah. it's something that popped up in my head when I read your proposal. I was mm -hmm. thinking, what do you feel about it? Um, what does the minister feel about it? Is, is there an ethical question here, or is it okay to do this, even though I understand the dilemma about the corruption? Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think that's a very good question. And first of all, my feeling is a bit icky. I didn't feel great about it. But then I weighed the, the advantages and the disadvantages. And the big advantage is that when people don't know what we're doing, they can also not interfere. Because we need to measure school attendance, we don't want to influence it. Because this program is supposed to influence school attendance, our organization is supposed to boost that, but us as researchers coming in and only wanting to measure it, we should do like our utmost best to not interfere with anything that's going on, and to merely observe and to measure. Um, but it's, it's a huge issue with uh, school principals, so we, are, we have already piloted this in another district. Um, and then we found out if you really have the signature of the local authority who says it's okay, they can come in, they don't really ask questions, not of what you're doing exactly. Of course, you chat and you socialize and you smile a lot and you say like, oh, please, can we come in? But they can never say no. If I may, what mm -hmm. about if they find out later that actually you were, you were counting the girls or in the boys? Mm -hmm. Okay, so all the 150 schools, we already started this uh, whole intervention a year and a half ago. All of these 150 schools know that they're part of a research, but they don't know exactly what's going on, and they knew as well that there's something going on with helping schools, and they could have a chance of becoming the control group or the treatment group, which means treatment group it means that they will get help. So they all knew this at beforehand, um, and some schools obviously dropped out. We started with 200 schools, and then we reduced and reduced, and now we had 150 schools agreeing to this. Thank we you. have one question from the audience. I Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Maybe afterwards. Yeah. Oh, there. <laughs> Thank you for this. Can you say something? You generate a rigorous evidence, you say. Mm -hmm. Can you say something about the theory of change behind it? How, will, how does this evidence will really lead to a change and how are the schools related and involved in this? Mm -hmm. um, so first of all, the theory of change of this intervention is the input is this money being invested, then the output would be the, cho the toilets that they built, uh, the number of teachers that they train, the number of communities that they uh, engage in. And then the outcome would be, this is a bit on the longer, longer term, the outcome is, for example, that the schooling becomes better, that they really teach the children about what is menstruation, also teach the boys to not tease the girls when they have their periods and to be a bit more accepting. So that's more on the outcome level, and the impact is really the long term. And that's why we did the surveying, and that's what I was talking about when I said well-being data. So that's the impact, and then we really try to uncover the channels to reach, for example, building a toilet, does that really mean the girl knows what to do uh, with all the products? And also, does she come to school? And does that help her? And does, for example, that increase her school performance? So we're really trying to uncover all the channels to which this project uh, can have an effect. And therefore, we actually also have three treatment arms in our randomized controlled trials. So one of the arms is only the school intervention, and the other treatment arm is the school and the community. So we can really disentangle all the different things. And I can really say, okay, this channel is so cost effective and this has so much impact. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.